Hello and thanks for joining me today on a Monday afternoon. Um, it's really nice to get your company and I'm back. I worked very well last week, so I'm back in this week and I'm looking forward to giving you some great demos. So I can see lots of you logging on already, but for anybody who doesn't know me, let me introduce myself first. So my name's Simon Williamson and I'm here from Avago Week Designs to give you some inspiration with our lovely products in the House Craft Network and show you things that you can make with your stash and my stash and we can um, have a bit of fun together at the same time. So, um, Thanks for joining us. If wherever you're watching from um, in the UK or further afield, it's really nice to have your company. Um, like and subscribe, and you'll be kept informed of any notifications, any upcoming news about Ava Going or the um, How to Craft Network family as well. So, really nice for you to do that. And if you do enjoy your video, just remember to put a little comment at the end, and it helps other viewers um, see if it's something for them to look. So, let's just have a say hello to some people that have joined us. So we've got Roxy Lee on there, Joe, Elizabeth. Irene, Selena, that's a new name. Hello, Selena. So, um, yes, great, isn't it? I'm back. And I love that little happy music as we're coming in. It makes me all happy for the day. So, um, the new features on the screen then. So, if you can see at the bottom here, we've got a little QR code. This is a scan to shop code. If you want to scan that and then enter the um, code SHOP8, that'll take you to a list of the products that we're using today's show. So, you don't have to worry about writing things down, remembering what the actual stamps are called, the codes for them. It's just a nice, easy way for you to actually enjoy the show and find the products later. So, great feature, and it'll be on quite a few channels on the Outcraft Network. So, great place for you all to um, find that information. So, let's get started with our first demo today then. So, I thought we'd have a change from the Game On Collection, and I brought back the um, <coughs> underwater little characters and the fish. So, I thought we'd go with this card first of all. And this is using the Bubbles and Twine stamp to get that fantastic background. Um, and then we're going to use just some of uh, the little characters from the fish there as well. So, Joe says, nice to see you back, Simon. Thank you. It's nice to be back, I tell you. It really is. Really missed it last week, but I just couldn't have done it. I didn't have any voice, I'm afraid. Right, so let's get started with this one. So I'm going to get the Eureka up first of all. And I've already cut a little bit of card. And this will go in my um, DL blank. I'll just tell you how big I've cut this. So it's three and a half by seven and three quarters. And that's going to fit perfectly on our card when we've done it. Ooh. And just get that magnet. Don't know my own strength there. So I'm going to use some of the fabulous kind of knot designs on this stamp set. So we've got the bubbles on there, the little hook, and then we've got these rope designs here. So these are the ones I'm going to be using today for the demo. So I'll just take those off the carrier sheet. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to position these where I want them. So some are double and some are single. So I'm going to just split them up a little bit. So we have it single, then double, going all the way down. And I want to put all the knots against one side. So I'm going to concentrate on this column down here, if you can see that. So let's get these stacked going this way, first of all. Make sure your rope just goes to this edge here. There we go. I love these as well because they're so versatile across your collections, you know, especially if you've got stamps at home with like ships on them and things like that. They're so kind of like maritime design, aren't they? And we're going to use the um, Midnight Black Ink from Stamps By Me. So let's just give that a good covering. He says, oh, fab card, I love the fish. I know. Do you know that I go through um, phases, but they're all my favourites, but for different reasons. I've had some cracking characters, though, haven't we, in the collections? So I'm going to do a little bit more. Just over that bit there. That's perfect. I'll move that magnet up now. I'm just going to continue these knots now going down the page. So keep them in the same order. Let's put that one down there. Selena, can anyone help? I have a new sunflower stamp and die. I'm in trouble getting the stamp off carry sheet. It's so strong. I sometimes find a little bit of hot water helps. If you just run um, the back of the carry sheet with some warm water, it sometimes releases it. I don't know, that, that helps you, Selena. If there's any other um, suggestions, guys, please help her. I know that's what I do. I'm going to pick those up again. I 
I'm loving your technical turn there, Elizabeth. Huff on it. <laughs> Just get these little end bits. And I'm just going to move that up a little bit. I'm going to go for my last three knots on here, so I think I'll get this one on. And this one. I'm just going to catch the bottom of this one, but I just think it looks better to put a bit of detail on there than not. So I'll get rid of that other one that we don't need. We'll just pick these up. Oh, I'm liking that you're all helping each other on that, are you? And there we go. So let's just take that out. Remove those three stamps. Oop. So you can see now we've got this um, actual pattern going all the way down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to actually position where we want to actually die cut out of. Now on the demo that I originally made, if I put it to the side, I use these love art shapes here. But I think what I'm going to do this time is actually just change it to a different shape. I'm going to use a circle first of all. So I'm going to use the die first to work out the areas we're going to take out. And then we don't have to colour bits in. We don't need to then. <laughs> so as I said, you will put a stamp so they know what I mean. I know what you meant. So I just love the terminology. So we could go for the hearts again, but let's go for circles, I think. So I brought a large circle there. So if we put the first one up here, just use a little bit of blue tape to hold it in position. And let's run that through this um, die cutter, first of all. I brought my hand well gun in today. Let's run that through. What are you all up to today then? You're crafting along at home. You've got a nice hot drink in your hand. So that's this first one out. And then we can centralise this now at the bottom. I always do top and bottom first, and then we can work out where that last one goes. Ooh, i just put that there. Just move up a little bit so you can see a bit better. So, yes, yeah, so you can work out your top and your bottom, then you can see what space you've got left in the middle to use. Especially with a shape that's this close to them. If you need to move it, then you can always off-centre it to fit it in. So I'm just going to run that through now to cut this one out. Amanda said, hi, Sam, I hope you're feeling better now. I am Amanda, I am Amanda. I think there's just something going around, isn't it? I think it's getting everybody um, I'm quite grateful. But I'm here and I'm fitting well now, and that's all that matters, isn't it? So I'm just going to put this last one in place. So we're going to go down the centre there. A bit like a traffic light design on this one. A little bit of tape. Try and stick inwards as well, so if it does rip your card, it's on the bit that you're discarding, so it won't ruin your design. Ooh, pick that up. And this is the last die cut then. Run that through. Selena's just had a nice bacon sandwich. Ooh, you're making me jealous. Just take those bits out. Put the blue tape off. Move that to one side. So there you go. So we've got this nice little mount now, and we've got this nice little areas that we can concentrate on for as detail. But we need to give a bit of colour to these ropes, though, now. So I thought I could watercolour them, but I thought I have that many art products in my room. Let's use something a bit different. So I brought some brightly coloured um, oil pencils. Uh, these are the Stamps by Me ones, but I'm sure you've got some of these in your stash at home. And I'm just going to give a little bit of a hint of a colour to each of these ropes to make it pop a little bit. So. You don't have to be too careful, but just just follow them around and just let's um, break up some of these and give them a bit of colour. If there's a bit of white in there, it doesn't really matter because you get the, the gist of the design. And it's nice as well because it's more of a pastel effect, isn't it? It's not as 
vivid as sometimes I go. So let's do this one red as well. It's nice to um, change to different medias as well, isn't it? So we get kind of stuck with the same one sometimes. So let's change up to a different colour. Just following that rope design round. You could do it with your alcohol pens as well if you've got them. Whichever you prefer, really. I just kind of thought it needed a little bit of a lift somewhere. So I'll just add a bit of purple to these. And I'll have this one purple as well, right at the base. Who's got um, Tony's new ink pads? But, um, this is my um, first time using them. I've got to say, they're really good, aren't they? I think they'll become my um, staple go-to. Let's have a little bit of blue in there. So it's not taking ages, it just gives it a bit of a different feel into it than leaving it white on there. Let's have this one blue as well. And if you've got the time as well, you could always two-tone this rope so it bring two colours together. Oh, this one blue as well, I think. Absolutely. I love my old pencils, I use them loads. Do you know, they're, they're brilliant, aren't they? They blend so easily. I've got to say, I don't think pencil cranes is my go-to thing because normally I'm difficult blending them, but these are really smooth. Just do these last few ones. Just to bring some of that colour in. I'm not being too careful, like I said, just following that row, quite rough really. But it does the job and it breaks up that whiteness. There you go, we can see, so we've got some nice kind of like colours going down there. And then the one thing I want to do just before we leave this stage is we're going to have a little a bit of a depth to it by using a, like, this one's like a silvery grey colour. And all I'm going to do is just underneath each one, just just go in and put a little bit of grey. Just to make it look like it's standing off the page a little bit. Just in them little bits. And you don't have to do every one, you can just, you know what I mean? Just give a bit of shadow into ever so often. That will just lift it up for you. Just to these bits. And then we'll just do a few down here. So it just adds a little bit of shadow, like it's a little bit higher than the page. I'll just do this one at the bottom. Take that one there. There you go. So I don't think you can see that on camera, but it just kind of like makes them a little bit different in um, height. So I'm going to move these pencil cranes away now. So let's get this mounted onto our card blank so we can start building this up now. So I've just got a normal DL card blank and I've um, cut a bit of glitter card, which is just slightly bigger than the piece of card that we were using. And that's going to give us a nice mount for our design. So let's get this put into position first of all, and then we can get our characters on it in a second. So let's use some glue for this. Just going to glue around the edge. I'm just going to use my tape runner in the middle just so that it all holds in place while I'm showing you guys. Let's get that centralised on his card. And then we'll do the same with this. So just put a little bit of tape runner down and then the rest I'll do with glue just so it really gets into the key of that glitter card. We'll turn that over and pop that down. And give that a good push down to make sure it adheres. So Maureen said fantastic impacts. They are, aren't they? I've got to say, I'm um, loving them. And you know what I'm liking is the firmer than a normal ink pad. Sometimes you can push in too much 
and it's a bit juicy on your stamp and you don't get the crispest image but I'm having a really good effect with these because it's a harder sponge to push into. So this is the um, stamp that we use and this is the bubble and twine. So you can find this on the Outercraft Network. You can see on there it's actually on offer as well. Um, didn't realise that, that's a bargain. But it's set down to £8 and it's really versatile. So if you are enjoying this card, it might be worth popping that in your basket and getting um, advantage of that really good price before it goes back up to its full price, which is normally £16.99. So really good time to purchase this then. I spoiled that to Tim. Shout out to Tim then. <laughs> right, so that's grip. So I'm just going to put that over to one side. Now we're going to work on the little centre circles for these. So I'm going to use the smaller nesting die. And I have got a piece of white card. I'll just get that. Now, we can do it two ways. You can stamp and then stamp onto the circles. Or you can do your circles and then stamp onto the No, I mean the reverse. So I prefer to find out the shape first. So let's just quickly cut three of these. one, smooth that off, my plates are very well loved I've got to say so it just wants to hold on to a bit longer, run that through the other way, I feel like there should be music playing when I do this. Take that other one out. And then we'll cut one more. Just do this. I know some people like to work the other way, but this is the way I prefer, so when I can line it up then the way I like to see it. It's like when you stamp and die cut, isn't it? It's, some people like to stamp and die cut the edge, others like to die cut the shape and then put the stamp on top of it. Let's move that to one side. So we've now got our small circles that we're going to use to decorate. And what I'm going to do is bring up the stamping press again. So this is your rig. Let's pop these in here. And let's use our little characters. So I've got a sentiment for the middle one. And that's have a Jawsome birthday. And that just fits in perfectly there. You can see that. And then I've also brought the tiny little fish with a big jaw. And he's going to go dead in the centre of that circle there. So let's just pick those up. Use the midnight ink pad. And just let's get a good crisp image from those. Perfect. So I've got our little fish, I've got our sentiment. I'm just going to do one more fish. So I'll do that on there. You could also do like part of a bigger character, but I just thought that this was um, fitting with the um, Jaws and Birthdays. It's got a big mouth, this fish, hasn't it? <laughs> there we go. We'll just put that under there. And then I'm just going to bring in those cranes that we use for our ropes and just use a little bit of colour on these fish. So let's do this one with a green mouth. And I like to blend these. So I'm just going to go softly into the top and then change to a different colour. So we're going to use the blue and green together. Just bring them round. And then we'll have this one with the blue fins. It's almost like I'm choosing the um, opposite colours. So one gets a green and blue head, the other gets a green and blue body. Just blend that a little bit so it gives you a third colour, that darker green. And then we'll give this one a red jaw.
And I think we'll bring in a bit of purple now. So just be as colourful as you want to. And there's nothing um, stopping you having these fish all pre-coloured, is there? And have a bit of fun. Especially with, like, if you've got young ones that want to help. Just darken that up. And this one can have purple fins. And I'll bring that red in for its body. And just blend them in a little bit. Into its back, there you go. I think they can have a red eye, this one. Make them a little bit, little bit sinister by the looks of him. So, just a little bit of colour, not too much. And we can bring our card back in. I'm going to use um, a foam pad to give it a little bit of height, this. So let's get, pop these under here. In the centre of the first circle at the bottom. This one can go right at the top. It's such a simple card, this one, isn't it? But it's got such... A great effect as that glitter card kind of mounts it again. And there we go. What do we think to that one? So you can see that those, uh, that bubble and twine stamp set really gives it a dramatic background. And that little bit of grey penciling just gives you a bit of a shadow on some of them ropes. If you've got a bit more time, you could do every single one, but it's just um, a really quirky way of doing it. And you could just use your nesting dies. I mean, you can see on there, I did it with a Love Art one, so alter your shapes. You've all got um, nesting dies in your stash. You could do it with squares, hexagons, circles, hearts, whatever you've got. Have a play around and just use your little um, stamps that you've got to create your own backgrounds and make a little bit more dimension doing it that way. So I hope you enjoyed that first demonstration. And we're going to give you some inspiration now from the Avago collection. And I'll meet you back here in a couple of minutes for the next demo. So I'll see you in a second. Hi, my name's Simon Williamson. I'm the guest demonstrator for Avago Ink Designs. Avago Inks is a... It's basically images that we can put together so anybody can have a go. I think I love the most about crafting is it can just give you time out in your own head. It can just down tools, not think about your mobile phone and just enjoy what you're going to do. Create a project and be proud of what you've made. My inspiration comes really from lots of sources. I love like looking at current trends. I like looking through the internet. And I like looking at what other people make. And I think truly inspiration comes from picking bits out of everything you see, pull it all together and make something that you can do with your skills. Avago products, we've got three collections out at the moment. We've got as dinosaur range, as farmyard range, and as little owl collection. And the main crux of the actual design is that there's a big image there, and a little character you can play around, have fun, and there's always some puns in there as well, so you can liven up the card and make it a bit humorous for everybody. I think if you're thinking about trying one of our products, is don't be afraid. Just buy any of the kits that you, I mean, you feel like you want to, and you'll always create a really good card from there. There's some good characters, good sentiments, and some really fun images in there. So just, just grab one and have a go. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that bit of inspiration from the Avago collection. I can see from your comments that you enjoyed that one. Okay, what does Maureen say as well? She's, I think it's all about the ink pads being really juicy. They are, aren't they? But just light little taps and you'll get a good um, coverage across your stamp. You don't need to press as hard as the other ones on the market. So um, let's go on to a second demo. So this one's a bit of ink blending. I thought I'd bring this back because I've not done one of these for ages. And look at the depth you get with these new ink pads. And look, it's so underwater. And the fact that we've gone lighter towards the top corner is it draws your attention to that sentiment. So let's get started with this one. So I've got... A little bit of watercolour card that's going to go in my 5x7 card. Move that out of the way so I don't need that. So this is 45 x 65 Then we're going to get a nice little um, kind of mount around us card. So and I picked this um, watercolour card because it's got a bit of texture so the ink will actually get into it a little bit more. And I'm going to use two of the new Stance by Ink colours. The pretty colours inside. I've got the Tiffany and the Ocean. So let's start with these. So... Let me just put them there, so I'll forget which one's which. <laughs> and I'm going to use the um, little circular blending brush, just so you can't put too much pressure on it then. So I'm going to choose the corner that I want the sentiment. So on this one, I think I'm going to go... Um, I think I'm going to keep it in the same direction, actually, and keep this kind of... There's a top corner that's a little bit paler, but we'll do it long ways this way, so it's a bit different. 
So let's start off by picking up some of the ocean. And I'm going to start blending from this corner towards there. So just nice circular motions. Go in light first of all. Pull that into your cardstock. This is why I like these brushes, because it's quite hard to um, leave a mark. Whereas a small circular one, sometimes you can. So just bringing that further up the cardstock. Take your time, obviously, so you can build this as you go. You can't take it off, unfortunately, so <laughs> go slow and make sure you're happy with your colours. So I'm going to just pull that in a little bit more into this white area. Into that corner up there. a little bit more ink and we'll just keep building that up now in this corner to make it darker and then let's add a bit of this Tiffany so still in the um, blue family just a little bit darker so it should help me build this up and the little lovely together these colors they really complement each another so just concentrate from this cor corner and building it outwards And this is when I find that texture on that card really helps. Just going lighter in these areas so it doesn't kind of um, take too much of the card. And I'm just going to put a little bit more pressure on this corner to make it darker. There we go, I think that's showing up really nice. I'm just going to put them to just one side so I don't, don't get my hands on them, you know me. If I'm going to have an accident, put my arm in something, it will be me. <laughs> you can see now we've got a lovely graduation in there, so whether we want to put a sentiment up here, or we're going to change it this way, you can see it's got a nice graduation as if the sun's coming from this direction. So I love that, but I want a little bit more texture on it. So this is why I'm going to just flick it with some water, as it's water reactive, this thing. So I'll just pick some up on my brush. Just little speckles. There we go, and just give that time to lift. It's quite fast actually, I've got to say. It's because they've got such a pigment in these, um, it works well. Just give that a second to lift. I'm going to pick it up with a bit of piece of tissue and it'll just take some of that colour off that I don't want. Give a little pat down. And look at that. Look how amazing that is. It's just got some nice depth to it. Really helps with this card that we're creating, doesn't it? So let's get that mounted onto a black base to make it pop. So a little bit of glue on this. I love a black border. I'm going to say it just adds a whole new dimension to it. There we go. And then what we're going to do is add a sentiment before we mount it onto his card blank. So let's pick up his Eureka again. Put his piece of artwork in there. So it is textured, so it will need a few presses to get this, but I think I'm going to stick with the You're Officially Awesome, which is a good pun, isn't it? Pulls these cards together very well in these sets. I'll magnet on to make sure it doesn't slip. Just to give that a quick wipe in case I touch the blue since it's a little bit higher. Pick that up. I'm going to go back in with the midnight black ink. I've put my sentiment in this white area here to make it pop. Who's a fan of ink blending? And I can see people on here saying super effective, loving this idea. 
It's so easy to get it with a, with a good ink. It blends really nicely. And it opens up such a world as well when you mix in two colours, but you're unlimited on the options you can do. So, just do that one more time. I'm really happy with that. Got a nice crisp sentiment there going on there. Could have mounted it on separately, but I wanted to kind of keep this layer flat, really. <coughs> Sorry about that. So let's bring that out. Just make sure I don't get ink on this card blank. Just going to run down the um, edge of that to make it a bit flatter. And then let's get this stuck onto our card blank so it really pops and then we can get some characters added to this as well. So a little bit of tape running. A bit of wet glue as well just so we make sure it really gets that towards the edge. Oh, I'm loving it already, that. Hold that down. That's brilliant, isn't it? So let's move that to one side. And I'm going to get some characters now on here. So let me just grab a piece of card. Now, I brought along some of the um, underwe underwater characters. So I've got the shark, and I've got the little octopus, and I've got its friend, the star, and the fish. So I think maybe we'll have a change in one of these three characters this time. But they've got so many expressions on their faces. If you've got these collections, you'll know what I mean. So they've all got really cheesy faces, big grins, or they look a bit menacing. But great fun. So that's just... Let's get those stamped out. I'm really happy with that. Got some nice crisp imaging. Just move this out of the way. And I want to do to use these, I'm going to try and keep the colours the same as the ink blending. So because the water base. I'm going to actually use these to watercolour with. So let's just put a little bit down there. So that's that Tiffany. And then I'll put the... Whoop. Really put wrong lid on that. That could have been an incident. So you've got your Tiffany and you've got your ocean there. So let's bring in a little bit of water. I tend to just give it a little bit of a wet where I want to put the colour first. So just to help it. And then we'll just bring some of this really beautiful blue. It's a really nice colour. It just helps it flood a little bit, look. You can pull it to where you want it. Um, I just kind of take it to the edge. I kind of like these little white bits in the middle, so I kind of leave them me. And let's move to one of the other little characters. So let's have our fish. Just wet him a little bit. We'll let our star around the edge. Pick some more of this blue up. I'm going to put a really dark colour on the is, um, tips of his little points. And then let's give him a darker kind of face. Push that around his eye. And let's bring some of this other colour in now. So. so it's just a darker kind of blue. Take that into his little fins. Really water that down for this starfish. We'll just pull that from the centre outwards. I'm just going to go in with that slightly darker colour as well. Just to give him a little bit more dimension. And the same on this fish. So he's got some little scales on his back. So let's make them pop a little bit. And then let's go on to our... He looks ever so unhappy, doesn't he? Look at his, look at his little sad eyes. 
Let's get some real colour onto those. Oh, he's a bit angry, isn't he? Just going to paint that darker blue under his tentacles. And then really water one of these blues down. I'm just going to bring that into his, his legs, just bringing that down. And I think I just need to make him a little bit dark on this bit, so let's just darken that up. And then we can bring that back round here, can't we? Just drag that darker colour through a little bit. I just think it needs to be a little bit darker. That's better. There we go, we've got our three characters all coloured in. So I'll just quickly wipe up this so I don't get this on the final card. There we go. I'm going to bring in the um, die cutter and we'll get these um, little characters cut out. So that's one of the great things with this little um, set is they actually come with um, the actual dies to correspond with them. I'm just going to give it a quick blast with a heat gun to make sure it's dried. So Sarah says, you can't beat a good pun. You can't, can you? You can't, I've got to say. There we go. And we'll just bring in the dies that we need. So we've got our outline for our friendly octopus. Let's put that in where it needs to be. A little bit of tape to hold it down. Oh, a little star can go there. Just use a little bit more uh, masking tape so it doesn't slip. There we go. Pop that that way around. And just pop that through now to cut them. So you've got the dies if you want to use them. It's a really good addition to this set. But if you like fussy cutting as well, they're not too complicated. I do both methods in fairness, so it's what you suit. Let's just move that out of the way. Pop our characters. There we go. And then I've got some foam pads now, so we can get a little bit of height to this when we assemble it. So I'm just going to move them off there. Let's put two on this one. So I think we should have him right in the corner there. It's like he's coming out of the darkest light area. It's coming to see what's going off. And then we've got our little fish, which I think we should get swimming in from this light lighter area. And then we've got our final little star. Sarah says the octopus looks like she feels. <laughs> oh, I hope you're not blue, Sarah. <laughs> and then we've got our little star going in. And you can go down here, look. What do you think to that? So a really, really effective ink background using those ink pads. A lot of detail on those. Move up a little bit. You can see that splattering as well with the water. Really gives you a bit more um, dimension as well. So something really easy you can have a play with, isn't it? Let me just get the other one that we made. So that's our two cards that we've made today. So it just shows you that you can play around with your stamps. You can think of them differently. I mean, this one just shows you actual layering dies, but you can have a play around with the shapes and um, you make the characters pop. And it also shows you how effective um, those little stamps can be as well, the little characters you get. Sometimes they get forgotten about, so you just go for the big images. So just wanted to show you two kind of cards that you can use to get the most out of your collection. So um, everybody's saying really cute card. Good, I'm glad you enjoyed that one. And thanks for joining me. It's um, nice to come back as well. So 
Um, hopefully you can join me at the same time next week for some more inspiration from the Avago collection. But until then, see you later. If you've got any questions, drop me a line on Facebook and I'll answer your questions. So see you next week. Bye-bye.